Hi again. So today's question is, what are your tips for getting access to land? Um, presumably this is to do with growing food. Um, well, it's the nature of the world we live in. It's very sad that our ancestors didn't ever have to worry about this because they moved through the landscape and everyone had access to all the land. And so to live in a world where some people have way more land than they could possibly ever look after and less they use large machines and very few of us um, have the land we need in order to grow some food for ourselves. That uh, is the nature of how things are. So how do we get access to land, particularly, I guess, if you live in a city? Well, one thing that I've always found interesting is to go knock on doors and ask people. So we live in a small cottage. This is where we have bookshelves. <laughs> And uh, we have a small garden at the back and we have a small garden at the front, even smaller because it's full of a fig tree and lots of soft fruit. And there's an area of land over the fence and we gorilla garden that. So what that means is that it's scrubland, it belongs to somebody, nobody's done anything with it for the last 10 years. And we've just planted trees and soft fruit and made a kind of wild forest garden over there. And it's very productive and we interact with it and look after it and um, and it feeds us not everything we need by any means but um, so that's a little bit of land that we've just basically said let's make use of it nobody else is doing anything with this and um, there's plenty of other land surrounding that that's full of wildlife so we don't feel that we're taking away from from wildlife um, but we also thought well if we want to grow vegetables then we're going to need to do that a bit more obviously and that's not something we really felt that we could do just by hopping over the fence there because that needs to continue to look a bit wild. So we went to the neighbours on two sides with two gardens that looked like that they weren't being used very much. One of them was rented and uh, is our neighbour on the slightly downhill side so we knew that we could collect water off our roof and actually capture it down the drain, our drain pipe goes down into that garden. We could collect it there and use it immediately in a little area which had previously been used for growing vegetables. It was it was already done essentially. So we um, asked her and she said, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm only renting. I don't need to look after, the, I don't want to look after the whole garden. So she was very happy to do that. And part of the deal was, you know, if you wanted to come and just help yourself to any fruit or vegetables, then feel free to do that and that was good. Um, so we started there and then we also felt a desire to plant more soft fruit. So um, we also approached two doors up in the other direction, that's over there. And they that was an owned house but they were a second home so that they were there some of the time in the summer but not all the time. And their garden was looking a bit overgrown. We thought they might need some help with their garden. And, uh, and so we went to, a, we approached them and they were great, you know, very lovely people. And, uh, and so we took on, they said basically start at the top and work down, which was where the original outdoor compost toilet had been hundred odd years ago. So it was incredibly fertile. And so we planted soft fruit and we basically worked our way down the garden. And there was, there's uh, several large apple trees in that garden as well. So um, disappointingly, <laughs> the people on that side who were renting moved out and the new people moved in and they wanted to use it. And uh, those people over there in the last couple of years ago also, they sold up and the new people came in and they built a massive great stone shed on the best, most fertile part of the garden. But we did manage to rescue all the plants. So access to land, well, I would say you don't necessarily have to own that land. There's plenty of beds that are planted up with uh, flowers and so on that are generally around that you can maybe stick a tree in the middle of. Um, you can go ask other people. There's less security in uh, sharing gardens with other people, but that's a really good way to meet your community as well. Um, and of course, if you live more in a city, then there's usually allotments. There's community gardens. Um, sometimes allotments have quite a long waiting lists, whereas community gardens are places you can go along and just connect. You know, so you don't need to be on a list for that. Um, 
And yeah, just find out who's growing food locally, uh, go meet them, offer to help. There's plenty of permaculture projects around to a really value support in terms of even just coming for an afternoon once a month to help out, do little jobs. It's an opportunity for you to start learning how to do those things as well and to decide for yourself, is that something you really want to do in the longer term? I remember um, when I was in my 20s, I had a, an idea that I would do uh, what I call green woodwork. So not in the same sense as working with green wood, but working with sustainably sourced timber, which was quite unusual at the time. And I loved doing woodwork at school and I thought I could do that for a job. So this is before I discovered permaculture. And, uh, and so I went through a whole process of getting organized and working out how much it would cost to do this and that. And then I worked for a join um, in a joinery for three months, just doing normal joinery and finding out how to do all of the things on a more commercial scale rather than just the leisurely, I'm going to make a nice, another nice chess table thing. And, uh, and I hated it. <laughs> so it's good. Even things like food production can be quite drudgery if you're doing particular kinds of food production and you're not really connected with the land and so on. So um, I would say it's always good to try things out before you commit to take on an allotment or a piece of land or something anyway. But if you're really keen to do it and you've done some um, growing in the past and so on, uh, seek out other people that have land very often that they'll need some help with it or they'll value that support. Um, and yeah, just um, I wish you all the best with that because there's nothing quite like working with land. <laughs>